Is it someone's actions? Is it a person? Is it a place? Sometimes it can even be a scent. Um, we smell something and it reminds us mm. of something, you know, way back during our childhood. Um, but what triggers that anger? Like, recognize those triggers and and let's put in the work to manage that anger when we're when we're feeling triggered. I also think what really goes on is when you're in a situation that's triggering you, mm -hmm. your brain Great to have y'all back. Great to be What's back good, with people? you in your homes, wherever you are, in your car. Great to be with you, though. Um, once again, it's Speaking With Gravity, the Speaking With Gravity podcast. It's a mental health podcast. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this today because... It's a little cold. <laughs> You're talking about it. We're chilling here. But, but this um, conversation going to bring the heat, though. Right, right. We're going to bring gonna, the heat. We're not going to get angry about it, right? No, we, no, we, no. We, we, that's not how we're going to deal with that. We're not going to be angry. Um, <laughs> that said, today we're talking about dealing with anger, mm -hmm. right? How to deal with anger. Um so another great episode. We'll hop right into it. Do want to introduce ourselves to you once again. Um, and I want to point out again, right, that this season is the first time that this trio has been before you leading this podcast up. Uh, we've all made appearances uh, before now, but now we're a thing, right? We're a group. We're, um, we're together. So I'm um, hoping that you enjoy this season. Hope you enjoy all the great content that's brought to you. Once again, I'm your host, Joshua Williams. Hey, everybody. I am Hannah Williams. I am a mental health professional um, located out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Super excited to be a part of this trio. Um, we're learning ourselves. We're here to learn, help other people grow um, as an in individual and just as a community as a whole. Uh, my name is Terrence Dawkins. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Swanbury, South Carolina, but also licensed in North Carolina. And I just love having mental health conversations or conversations surrounding around the mental health topic just because it helps spread awareness about mm -hmm. mental health and helps heal communities. I think awareness is the biggest thing, right? Uh, being aware of, uh, of, uh, of mental health uh, issues, mental health uh, occurrences, things that, are, that we might think are not so common, right? We mm -hmm. might think, hey, I'm the only person that's dealing with this. I'm one of few, and we may be one of many, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important to have a platform like this where we put these things... Um, we put these things out in the open, right? So we talk about them, increase that awareness, and just let you know that you're not alone mm -hmm. in your struggle. You um, are not alone. Um, and one common emotion that all of us humans experience is anger. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be seen in different forms, different severities, different levels. Um, and anger is, is so powerful. It's so powerful if we allow it to be. Mm -hmm. Most certainly, most certainly. Um, and I think so. The the episode today is about dealing with that anger, right? How do we deal with that anger? I think that a lot of times, y'all, y'all back me up on this. Y'all let me know I might be wrong, but I feel as though people um, one one reason that anger stays as prevalent as it is is people use anger, right? Sometimes to mm -hmm. deal with their challenges, to deal with their problems, to deal with things that come up. Um, I feel like people use it, right? I feel mm -hmm. like they feel like um, that's. That's why anger is there, right? So that I can, so that I can use it to to get over. What about what about what y'all think? Yeah, I think. Okay, here it goes. Here we go. <laughs> so, my thing is, is, and I'll speak to, and this could be within, um, you know, family relationships, friendships, or uh, intimate relationships. But I think people use anger because number one, they've seen it be used as a way to communicate. Uh, growing up or they see it just within their communities or somewhere they see it um, and then what happens is they associate it with anger or using anger means I'll be heard and mm. so in order for me for you to listen to me in order for me to get my point across I gotta yell I gotta become frustrated I gotta become angry and then if you become angry I gotta be even more angrier than mm -hmm. you are in order to get my point across 
And they probably learned that behavior from some particular place. What I'm hearing is that sometimes that emotion of anger can feel like a competition. Mm -hmm. Who's the maddest um, or who can show the most anger? Um, who can speak the loudest or yell the loudest? Um, who can be the most violent? And that competition is so unhealthy, but it's not rooted um, in a place of right now. This this comes from generations or um, different patterns of anger being passed down and um it, we may even inherit a sense of anger um, from our environment or from the people around us. But how do we deal with that? How do we manage it? Um, and more so, how do we control it so that we express anger in a healthy way? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to touch on how how do we manage it? How do we control it in a healthy way? I think that's really important. But, you know, you said something about community. Uh, I think you said, um, Hannah, or, or something to, to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, I you know, you have to be, um, I, th I think you have to be careful. Um, uh, I want to say almost um, what you, I don't want to say what you let into your community, but um, I guess I'll say it like this. Um, I feel like some communities may thrive on anger in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Um for instance, uh, I know growing up, I felt like um, in my community, I felt like anger was, uh, like we were saying earlier, it, it was kind of a tool, right? And the angriest person in the neighborhood or the angriest looking person on the block, if you could look scary, if you could look angry, mm -hmm. then, you know, m maybe that'll, um, that'll, that'll tell people that you're tough or it'll say different things about you. And I think, like, in our communities, like, we have to really combat that, right? or we risk our communities becoming angry places, yeah. right? Because angry people make angry places, yeah. right? Um, I think uh, in addition to people using anger as, like you said, a form of competition in, in relationships, I also think it's more of like a survival uh, mm -hmm. technique as well. So mm -hmm. if I become angry, you know not to mess with me. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, and especially, like I say, in a community where anger is the norm. If I show anything less than anger, frustration, irritability, then they're going to say, oh, you soft. Mm -hmm. Oh, you weak. So now, guess what you're going to have to do at that point? I'm going to have to show and prove to you that I'm not soft, that I'm not weak, or in, in, as a result, probably get bullied if I don't. Mm -hmm. So, and as a survival technique, i got to match it or be even more increasingly more angry, more mad, uh, frustrated, and, and show that or else something bad is going to happen to me. And I think what happens is we develop these different beliefs about whether that's depression, anger, sadness. We develop these beliefs, and from those beliefs, we do these different behaviors. Mm. So, again, the belief is I have to be angry in order for me to survive. If I don't, people may pick on me. If I don't, then, you know, something's going to happen bad to me in my family system. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a little bit of where that comes from. I think what our community can do a better job of doing is um, listening to the people that are expressing that that emotion of anger. I heard you say, like, um, most people feel unheard or mm -hmm. unseen, so they have to develop this identity of being mad. Um, I often think about the stereotype of um, the angry black woman and how for so long some women um, express their emotions, but they feel unheard, they feel unseen. So now they have to develop this identity of being mad and um, being more dominant and more assertive um, than what they would like to, just to simply be heard. And this can be seen across the board. It can be seen in men as well. It can be seen in children, the one child in the class that always acts up and um, misbehaves. They they crave that attention. They just really want to be heard um, while expressing those internal feelings. So how can we hear and listen and understand those individuals? I think that's very important to recognize. Um, and it starts with yourself. So is it safe to say that uh, a lot of times anger is the effect and not always the cause of certain behaviors? Like I'm not um, doing, I'm not acting out just because I'm angry, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just the cause. There's a root cause that comes before yeah. that. You know, there's a reason for me being angry, and and so when you see that behavior, when mm -hmm. you see me fighting, it's not because I'm this angry uh, child or whatever. It's maybe it's because I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting something, mm -hmm. right? I 
I often think of the analogy of a tree. So when we see a tree, we see the trunk of it, um, the leaves, the stems. How, however, we do not see the roots. Mm -hmm. The roots are so powerful, um, and they add up. To, they make the tree what it is. So without those roots, the tree would, you know, fall over. But all we see is the, the trunk of the tree um, and the leaves. <clears throat> however, those roots are so important. I feel like anger stems from some of those roots, whether it's feeling unheard um, or whether there's a void that someone may be experiencing. Um, I feel like that, that sense of anger, that emotion of anger comes from those underlining issues that we don't often talk about. And sometimes not even talk about, we might not always identify or know that they're existing. Y'all yeah. seen the movie Titanic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. iceberg. Yeah, that iceberg. Do you remember when they saw that iceberg? They was like, oh, my God, we got, we're going to hit the iceberg. We need to turn it. We need to turn it. Mm -hmm. So I always ask people, what were they really afraid of? Were they afraid of the iceberg directly uh, in front of them that they could see? Or were they afraid of what they couldn't see? Mm -hmm. And then people will be like, what, what do you mean? I say, which part did the most damage to that boat? What they couldn't see. The part they couldn't see. The part that was up under the water. That's the part that pretty much punctured the boat and all the water mm. came flooding in and that's when it sunk. Mm -hmm. So I tell people it's not about what you see. Anger is the outward expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the under, like you said, the roots, the underlying thing could be I'm hurt mm -hmm. because this person did this or I'm frustrated, mm -hmm. I'm sad, I'm disappointed. But that all comes out as anger. Mm -hmm. And people... I feel like learn that from somewhere mm -hmm. that in a way to experience or to express these other emotions, it has to come out as anger. All right. mm -hmm. But we need to do a better job with learning how to, number one, identify exactly the specific emotion we're feeling mm -hmm. and then being able to communicate that specific emotion so that we can, like you said, get to the root problem to fix mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So, um, I think you. Uh, I think y'all both brought up really great points, um, and thinking about. So, how do we deal with anger? I mean, I know that those underlying issues, right? We have to address them. Um, but for someone who's on their journey, right, their healing journey, and they're addressing some of those underlying issues, um, but also, you know, they still have the effect. The, the anger is still there. Mm -hmm. How do they? You know, what are some uh, good strategies for dealing with that anger, though? Uh, well. Uh, think about find, identifying different coping skills, whether that, whatever that is for someone that could be uh, listening to music. That, like for me, it's like I said before in a previous episode, it's riding my motorcycle just because I feel uh, free and I feel yeah. like I can mm -hmm. clear my head. Um, but listening to music, reading a book, playing video games, spending time with friends uh, outside of maybe what has gotten you angry mm -hmm. or upset about, spending time with family. Uh, people say do do pretty much is do anything that's going to take your mind away from what you're angry at because you can't focus on two things at once. Mm -hmm. So if your mind is completely focused on having a conversation with friends, you ain't gonna be thinking about what's, what's right. angry unless you and your friends decide to talk about it. That just would be crazy. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just really listening to the lyrics of a song. My mind's not focused on what made mm -hmm. me angry. So doing something that you enjoy, but really uh, putting yourself fully into the activity or with that person, that's how you probably can deal with anger. Yeah, I just want to feedback off of that a little bit. What I'm hearing you say is that we just have to release that anger. Mm -hmm. And um, in my personal experience, sometimes I got so used to releasing that anger in a negative way mm -hmm. um, and masking that anger that it wasn't until I learned how to release it in a healthy way that I'm like, wow, this actually feels good. You know, I'm so used to being, um, you know, resorting to maladaptive things to release anger versus releasing it in a healthy way, like you mentioned, listening to music, um, exercising. That can look like different things, different forms. Um, some people do yoga. Some people do more a more aggressive form of exercising, such as lifting weights. Um, but I think the key here is finding your niche, finding that hobby that allows you to release that anger um, and understand it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so let me ask y'all something. So 
Um, I, I do feel like there's a difference between rage mm -hmm. and anger. Um, I feel like that. But is there is there a difference between rage and anger? I feel like one is a little more short term. Which um, is rage. Rage, okay. Rage is more short term and in the moment and anger is more long term. Mm. Um in in my perspective, in my opinion. So one, we experience um intense um quickly suddenly which is rage um it's like a lightning bolt you know we see it and then it's gone and then on the other hand anger is more persistent more constant um it's it's always there if we allow it to be there um but it can it can it can come on and impact us just as quickly as rage can but it's persistent so i think that's the difference in um to me yeah, I think rage is uh, impulsive. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, oh he he or she just went out in a rage, mm -hmm. um, and that means that person did something that was so, like you said, short term, intense, that had some type of big impact, mm -hmm. and and more most of the time it's impulsive, and then people at the after the rage has subsided, they'd be like, oh, wow, I can't believe I did that. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's impulsive, but then it's also done where. I feel like people aren't really thinking about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's just more of let me react this way in order to get this out so I can feel better. Because that's mm -hmm. really what we're trying to do. If with any emotion, we're trying to do something in order to help us feel better. Mm -hmm. So if I can, um, and if I'm in an argument and I have to talk over you or I have to you know, do whatever to get my point across, I'm going to do it because that's going to help me feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that we people that we want to do as people is to feel better. And so we will do anything to try to help us feel better quickly. And I think anger um, and even rage, rage as well, but anger can lead to so many impulsive decisions that we look back and we regret um, in the in the long run. Um, we allowed our temporary emotions at that moment to impact something so long term. And then we look back and we're so regretful. However, if we're able to learn how to manage that feeling of um, anger, we don't have to necessarily make those impulsive decisions that impact us for a long time. And I feel like an emotionally mature person recognizes that I'm going to get mad. I'm going to get angry sometimes. People are going to disappoint me. Um, but how can I how can I manage this? How can mm -hmm. I express? it in a healthy way um, and move past this this feeling of anger. Do y'all feel like that that uh, voice inside of your head is a real thing? Yeah, I think we don't, I think a lot of times we don't listen to that voice inside of your head because that voice could tell you you need to act out of anger or rage, but the voice could also tell you, yeah, you probably need to calm down. But mm -hmm. we don't really, because I think we have, I'm not really going to get into the whole therapy part of it, but when we have these conversations, we really need to listen to that mm -hmm. inner voice sometimes, like both sides of it, because you have a part of you that wants to act out into a rage, but then you'll also have a part of you that wants to calm down and relax. Mm -hmm. And when we are in conflict with those two parts, I feel like you need to identify the pros and cons to each situation to then make a conscious decision instead of an impulsive decision. Mm -hmm. mm. But I don't think it's just always negative, negative, negative. I think you always have that inner voice that probably, like you said, the, the devil or the angel that's mm -hmm. telling you both what's going on or what you should do and have an opinion, but you need to weigh the pros and cons. Mm. It's so important. Yeah, I look at that voice as like a voice of reason. It could mm -hmm. be reasoning mm -hmm. to me in a bad way, believe it or not. Uh, or an impulsive way, it could mm -hmm. be reasoning in a in a more healthy way. I think like cultivate like um, almost having a conversation with that voice sometimes, or at least with with yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. I think when you have those conversations with yourself, I think what you start to do is start to almost train that voice. Right. Almost say you know um, like like perfect example. I know somebody they cuss all the time. Right. And they, they come off as kind of angry. I can tell that that's in their thoughts, right? And so then in those situations, um, when they've said things to me in private, and then they get mad at mad with someone, mad with someone, I hear them say those same things, mm -hmm. right, that they were thinking out 
in private to me. So that lets me know that that voice of reason inside their head is prone to reacting in that certain yeah. way. But what, what, what I try to tell them is, you know, w- when you get by yourself, you know, work on that. Work on mm-hmm. how you speak to yourself, right? Work on how you speak to yourself, reflect on that. And then when you're put in those situations, maybe that voice of reason, right, would be, would take a different perspective, right? Would mm-hmm. be more positive. I mean, that's my hope, right? I know that's something that's worked for me. So do you think that, do you think that you can, um, I guess in, um, you can kind of train that that voice of reason? Yeah. I think it takes practice. Yeah. It takes practice, and you even mentioned this, but um, it takes practice watching our tone of voice. Watching. Mm. It takes practice. If, if we grew up in, a, in an environment where um, we always saw everyone around us yelling at each other within our household just to communicate, mm-hmm. um, get me the remote. Or, um, you know, that's that voice. You know, <laughs> that that is how we're conditioned and how we're going to communicate. It takes practice to recognize I'm yelling over a remote right now when I can simply say, hey, can you pass me the remote? That takes practice, and it's not easy, but you have to be so cognitive and remind yourself um, to hold yourself responsible to to practice those things. Um, something else I could think of is not just watching your tone of voice, but watching your choice of language. So if yeah. you're used to cussing or cursing um, when you're mad, how can I change these things, these patterns and behaviors that I'm used to doing um, in order to become a better and healthier version of me? So I think it just takes practice, which is not easy, but it's needed. Yeah, that vocabulary is so important. Like, um, uh, I, I think it's important for a parent to help their kids have uh, a more expansive vocabulary, mm-hmm. right? Because then you can kind of define things differently. You can defi- Instead of saying, I'm angry, right, you can say... Um, I'm feeling let down, mm-hmm. right? So it's like kind of because yeah, yeah, because yeah. so it's like um, and you, and you start to kids and people or grown adults start to think these things out in their heads instead of I'm mad, I'm mm-hmm. angry, and that's it. That's mm-hmm. that's like a really limited vocabulary. Mm-hmm. So I think um, when when you talk about language, that's kind of what it takes me to is um, kind of expanding your vocabulary so you can. Uh, explain yourself better, right? Mm-hmm. And define yourself better in these situations. I think it's really important. It yeah. Is. And also, we have to identify what triggers that anger. What triggers it? What mm-hmm. triggers that anger? Um, is it words? Is it someone's actions? Is it a person? Is it a place? Sometimes it can even be a scent. Um, we smell something and it reminds us mm. of something, you know, way back during our childhood. Um, but what triggers that anger? Like, Recognize those triggers and and let's put in the work to manage that anger when we're when we're feeling triggered. I also think what really goes on is when you're in a situation that's triggering you, mm-hmm. your brain considers it a threat. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's this whole part of the trauma response of my brain says, "Oh, now you're in a threat," and then it goes to another part of my brain that kind of triggers or kind of sifts through the, our catalog system and say, oh, like you said, was there another time where I felt this or experienced mm-hmm. this? And then it picks up on a different experience. And then it goes to another part of your brain that says, well, we need to be in that fight, fight, or yeah. fight, fight, or freeze, or fawn mm-hmm. uh, response. Mm. And then that's what happens. So what people don't understand is anger is really a biological response for Biolog- survival. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much your body is automatically doing it. That's what I meant. Uh, when I said biological, it's automatically doing it for survival. Mm-hmm. And it's based off of earlier experiences, it's based off current experiences, and it's based off how you interpret the event. And your brain does it so quickly that you're not even aware of it in right. the beginning. And that's why I said people need to take time to take a moment, take a step back in order to try to assess the situation mm-hmm. and figure out, all right, what is my next step? So becoming aware of doing that. And I think the sooner we're able to condition ourselves to manage our anger um, in a healthier way, the sooner we're um, able to flourish. So if a child is taught from birth how to express their emotions and how to express and control their anger, they're going to grow into a teenager and adult that um, is able to do the same. However, if we have spent our entire lives um, expressing our anger in a negative way, it's going to take even more work 
in the long run, um, you know, a 15 year old learning how to manage their anger compared to a 50 year old. So the point that I'm making is that we have to start this process now. Um, I feel like the emotion of anger, sometimes it can build on top of um, one event can build on top of another event. And that's thing, you know, we have like a dramatic outburst because we have all of this anger stored up inside of us. And I often think about the snowball effect. You know, the anger can start really small, but over time it just um, layers up, layers up, layers up until we burst. So we don't want that burst to happen. We want to be able to seek professional help, um, talk to our our um, support system and use those healthy coping strategies to release the anger. So, I mean, there's several different ways uh, that we can think about anger. The important thing, you know, is to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't neglect it. Where is it coming from? Who, what type of people are we triggered around? Is our anger triggered around? And what has been our role in our own anger? Um, with mental health, you've consistently heard heard it said, you know, it's your responsibility. So managing your anger, right? Is, is and your role in your anger is your responsibility um, and you know we have to um, we have to be addressing it I think constantly and I think about um, as, as we wind down here I think about uh, what are some of the the um, I guess the results of unmanaged anger um, a few that come to mind to me is like a defiant personality I've mm -hmm. seen that in people and that's scary because with that you know a lot of times people look for things to be angry about sometimes. Look for things to be defiant about. I've also mm -hmm. seen isolation be a big one. And I hate that. I hate to see a family member in isolation. Um, a lot of times it's because, you know, it. I mean, it probably starts from other behaviors, but that anger is one that's that's really, that, that, that you can really see, right? And, um, and, you know, people, you know, other family members, other, you know, friends might not want to be around that person because nobody wants to be negative about mm -hmm. and have to deal with your anger, right? Uh, you should be dealing with your anger, and then you're not going to be be comfortable being around people either if you are, you know, if you're yeah. angry and you're and you're upset all the time. Um, so I think about, but uh, real quick, so some of the um, unmanaged, the, the effects of unmanaged anger. Anything come to mind? Mm. The effects of unmanaged behavior. Unmanaged anger, yeah. Anger. Lack of relationships, friendships. Quality uh, ones, yeah. Quality, mm -hmm. especially that quality relationships, because uh, you can be friends with people, the other people that are that are angry, but that doesn't mean that they're the quality ones, because they're not going to be the ones to tell you when you shouldn't be angry. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones that's going to, you know, in a way, put you in your place. So I think the impact of friendships, the impact of uh, family relationships, the impact of um, intimate relationships, you start to see that uh, impact on your ability to. Uh, be active and engaged professionally because now you're upset all the time of when your boss or supervisor says something or, oh, they talked to me wrong. I don't know who they think they're talking to. You know, those mm -hmm. different things people say. So I think that's what you'll start to find. You'll start to find disruptions not just in one place but multiple places. And like I said before in the previous episode, people will just then blame other people for their actions and behavior. Well, they're the reason why I'm mad and they're angry. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm angry. So I think you have to take responsibility for your own actions and why you played a part in this situation to become aware of how can I make, what changes I need to make and how can I make these changes. And I think um, we can also, some of the effects of unmanaged anger, you can get into um, trouble with the law. You know, <laughs> which is, you know, the elephant in the room. But mm -hmm. some of those impulsive decisions can lead us um, to legal trouble, um, which is not just impacting the people around us like you were speaking of, but it can impact us um, long term on a bigger perspective, on a bigger level. Um, so, yeah, anger has a lot of negative effects and impacts. Yeah, as we close out, um, Hannah, what's... what's uh well, or Terrence, or e either one. But what's uh, some healthy ways that we can talk about our anger? Mm -hmm. That we can voice it so that people understand that we're angry. We might not, you know, um, you know, might not need to be dealing mm -hmm. with us right now. What are some healthy ways to talk about anger? You can establish a boundary. If you know that you're not the type of person to have a healthy and effective conversation when you're uh, super mad or when you're super angry, um, furious, set a boundary. Mm -hmm. Hey, Give me five minutes. Hey, give me a day. Es establish a healthy boundary, I should say. Don't say, I'm mad right now. Don't talk to me ever again. 
um, <laughs> you know, establish a healthy boundary where you know your limitations, you know what you need in that moment um, to manage your emotions um, and communicate that boundary. And then on the opposite end, if you're the person um, on the opposite end, respect that boundary. Mm -hmm. Respect that someone knows their emotions well enough to know that, hey, I can't have an effective conversation right now because I'm too mad. Uh, we can revisit this conversation tomorrow um, and try to see eye to eye about it. So establish a, a healthy boundary. Mm -hmm. um, I had something, but I'm, uh, it just left me. But establish mm -hmm. a healthy boundary, but also uh, use I, like, hey, focus on you, not what they did. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if somebody was to break my toy, my favorite toy, and I'm a kid, I would say I became upset because my favorite toy is broken. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't be like, you broke my favorite toy, so now the other person gets defensive. So I definitely mm -hmm. would start a lot of things with I, and I also like to use the word and instead of but when I communicate because and is in addition to, but when you say, but when you say, but that means you kind of negated everything you said before that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you and someone are having a conversation about anger, you use uh, the word and and use the word I. I love it. I love it. Well, y'all, this has been uh, another great episode of Speaking with Gravity. Yes. Um, and this is our, th our third episode of this season together. How y'all feeling? Feeling great. Yeah, season lovely. eight, season yeah. ocho. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit so, of it. So we're gonna but keep yeah. this thing going, y'all. Um, you know, encouraging you out there. Um, uh, you know, look for ways, healthy ways to to deal with your anger and so much more. Whatever you got that's underlying, right? We want to make sure that mm -hmm. that we're addressing those things, dealing with those things, and see a therapist, right? Um, you know, seek seek the right kind of help, right? Um, I think is I think is so important. Uh, so I want to continue to encourage you, please, um, uh, you know, come and sit with us, be with us again. Yes. Uh, next episode, we look forward to that. Look forward to seeing you then. And with that, we'll get about Check it. Check us out. See ya. See you guys.